Hello friends, I'm Hitar Trivedi, part of Interactive Analytics team at Uber. Our team manages and maintains Presto clusters at Uber. Today I'm going to talk about Prism, which is a Presto gateway service at Uber. Following is the agenda. I'm going to start with overview of Presto at Uber, why we need to even build Prism, architecture of Prism, functionalities of Prism in detail, future work, and I would end with a Q&A. So Uber's mission is to ignite opportunity by setting the world in motion. We are currently active in 10,000 plus cities around the world. We have 93 million monthly active users and we serve approximately 16 million trips per day. Now data is very important and it is part of every critical decision at Uber. There are community operations team at Uber which uses data. These are small teams handling specific cities and regions. Marketplace pricing team also heavily uses data. Each team, compliance team, mainly uses data for legal purposes. Growth marketing team and our favorite data science teams. Now let's talk about Presto at Uber scale. We have around 12,000 monthly active users. These users run around 400K queries per day. These queries roughly process around 50 petabytes of HDFS data per day. Presto clusters are present in two data centers. They comprise of approximately 4.5K nodes. And there are 12 different Presto clusters at Uber. There are a variety of tools available at Uber to talk to Presto. We have a lot of services in Golang. These services use Presto Go client to talk to Presto. We also have services in Python. These use Python, rather PyHive client to talk to Presto. And we also have a number of data tools like Tableau and Data Grips which uses JDBC client to talk to Presto. At Uber, we differentiate all the queries into two specific types of workload. The first type of workload, we call it interactive. These, this workload includes ad hoc queries. So users coming to a particular service and running ad hoc queries. Then there is a, another set of queries we call, the, call it batch. These are scheduled queries or queries coming from specific services in a scheduled manner. So what we have done is we have pre-configured our Presto clusters for a specific type of workload. So for interactive workload, we have interactive Presto cluster. And for batch workload, we have batch Presto clusters. So now let's talk about why we had to build Prism. So as you saw that we have multiple types of workloads and uh, Presto clusters are configured specifically for that type of workload. So like you can see here, client one is running ad hoc queries using Go client and these are supposed to go to interactive Presto cluster. Client three, which is running scheduled queries using PyHive should be going to batch Presto clusters. Client two, which is using, again, using ad hoc queries using Tableau should be going to interactive clusters. And client four, which is using scheduled queries using Go client should be going to batch Presto clusters. Now, as you can see here, each client is maintaining which Presto cluster it is talking to. So the configurations like the coordinator name and other configurations which are specific to that Presto cluster lives in the client. So in, in that case, uh, it is client's responsibility to select 
the right cluster. We have seen in the past that in this model, a particular client may, may not be selecting the right type of presto cluster. So let's say for example, client three, although it is scheduled, it is running scheduled queries, it can be configured to talk to interactive clusters. What can happen in that case is not, it will not only impact the queries which are run, uh, running on interactive clusters, but will also impact the client, uh, the other uh, clients which are talking to interactive clusters as well, like client one and client two in this case. So this, this has caused issues for us in the past. Also, uh, there are some clients which can talk to specific presto clusters only, like in like Tableau, you will have to mention a particular coordinator. Now, if that coordinator is down or if that coordinator is take, taken out of rotation, all the queries coming from that Tableau will start failing unless they switch to another cluster. So as you can see, because the client configurations are, rather the presto configurations are, are stored in the clients, we have, uh, we have multiple entry points into the cluster and we have seen number of issues in the past. That is why we came up with a single entry point. We call it Prism. So all the clients are configured to talk to a single, uh, single service Prism and Prism knows which client should talk to which particular cluster. And it, it also knows which cluster is up and running. So it can manage, uh, it can manage the resources in a proper way. So basically Pr Prism is acting like a cluster of cluster, all our presto clusters. So with Prism, we can do a lot of stuff like resource query gating, and even monitoring of our entire presto ecosystem. Now let's talk about architecture. Prism architecture is pretty simple. We have a user who submits their query to client. Now it's client's job to get a token from our security service and pass it along to Prism. Now Prism does a bunch of validation and identifies the client based on the HTTP headers and from that, it will know which type of workload it is, and it forwards the query along with the delegation token to the respective Presto cluster. Now, the Presto cluster is going to validate uh, the, uh, the client using the token which it got from Prism, and it will continue to run the query. Once the query completes, the results are then submitted back to a stream back to client. There is also another option where Prism can actually write the results to HDFS and make this HDFS path available to user as well. So that was that. So that's the basic architecture. Now let's talk about the functionalities which are present within Prism. So there are a number of features which we'll talk about in detail. So query execution is one, routing, load balancing, failover, query gating, and rate limiting. Now let's talk about each of this feature in detail. First, query execution. Now query execution is the most important feature of Prism because it's actually running the query on the Presto cluster and why so Prism is written in uh, Golang. So it uses Presto Go client to interact with Presto clusters. There are two main modes of running uh, uh, a particular query. We call it async execution using data stream. And another one is using file descriptor. Now let's see what these two modes mean. The first one is async execution using data stream. This is the preferred approach and which is and 100% of our queries are currently using this approach. 
in this mode user is submitting the query to client the client is using presto go client to talk to prism directly and it's uh, and it is submitting the query to prism now prism knows which cluster to talk to and it will forward the query to uh, the presto cluster and it will make the initial post call needed uh, to run the query after making the post call the subsequent get it it will the prism is going to redirect the uh, control uh, back to presto go client and the subsequent get calls then happen directly from go client to the chosen presto cluster once the query completes the results are streamed directly back to the client from presto cluster and back to the user the second approach is using the file descriptor mode so in this mode user is submitting the query to the client the client is then forwarding the query to prism prism has presto go client and using which it is talking to the chosen presto cluster once the query completes prism is going to write the result of the query into hdfs after the result writing gets over prism is going to give the client back the path hdfs path where the result is stored the client can now talk to hdfs and retrieve the result from the given path now let's talk about routing as i had mentioned earlier there are two main types of workload interactive and batch and um, prism maintains a source map which is which it uses to identify which uh, the queries from particular this particular type of cluster so this source is uh, available via http request header to prism and using its source map it will choose the right presto cluster now let's talk about load balancing which is another important feature in prism prism pulls the uh, presto coordinators to get the current load of cluster it is getting information like number of running queries on each cluster number of queued queries and another important factor is worker count now not all clusters are of the same size so some cluster can be of 100 node and some cluster can be of for uh, uh, have some cluster can have 400 nodes in them now and because of this reason they cannot run the same number of queries so so prism considers number of workers as an important factor uh, to determine what is the max uh, concurrent queries each cluster can run so it uses that to determine load now based on the load factor prism can route the query to a particular node which is best suited at that particular moment another important feature is failovers now failover is uh, uh, is very frequently used feature uh, uh, for us at uber what failover does is it it helps in taking a cluster out of rotation so let's in this particular case uh, we have three clusters and suppose you had to take let's say cluster 3 uh, for doing some maintenance work or you are restarting the cluster or you are even let's say you are deploying new code to the cluster in that case instead of failing all the in uh, all the queries we will do a failover such that prism will no longer forward new queries to that cluster and we can do maintenance on that cluster without having any impact on the reliability prism has another other features as well all these features are driven by 
user behavior or the problems that we have seen. So one common problem was bad user queries. So we have seen that some users would run run very large queries, which would occupy, uh, which would consume a lot of memories and have impact on other running queries as well. Because Presto is a shared resource, uh, we need to identify such users and we can add, uh, add them to our block list so that no queries from these users or even sources can come and run on Presto clusters. Another set of problem that we have seen is bad session properties. Now at Uber, we have added a lot of guardrails in place. So uh, for things like query time limits, memory limits, these are set at cluster level, but this, all these properties can actually be changed via session properties. So we saw that certain users are misusing these properties and they are setting it to a high level which breaches the guardrails that we had put place at cluster level. So what we did was Prism is going to allow only certain session properties to be set by users, while some properties it will not be able to set. Prism also applies uh, session properties per source. And also the value of this session properties, uh, Prism has an way in which it can restrict the value to a certain range. So for example, uh, query time limit, uh, we have set, let's say we have set a query time limit of 30 minutes. Prism can check this value uh, and it can make sure that it is not more than 30 minutes. So it can be less than 30 minutes, but it, it will not be more than, uh, it, it can never be more than 30 minutes so that users cannot run a query and abuse the system. Another issue that we had seen was too many queries from one user or source. So, uh, like, so in order to tackle that problem, we added rate limiting feature. So since Prism is cluster of clusters, it knows the entire ecosystem. Uh, it knows the global view of all the running queries from a source as well as from a user on all the given clusters. So based on that information, uh, we can set a limit on how many concurrent queries a particular user or a source can uh, run at a time. So all these features have been really useful in uh, maintaining the reliability and the availability of Presto cluster at Uber. Now let's talk about some of the future work. We are currently working on a feature called advanced query gating. So we have seen that there are, there are some type of queries which continue to fail on Presto cluster. So even though they are failing, they are actually consuming resources, which can be used for running other queries, uh, which are, which we know are going to succeed. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to uh, identify such query patterns and block them to uh, block them from even running on the Presto cluster. Another feature that we are working on is called query warning. So we have seen that queries which succeed today might fail tomorrow. So they, they are pretty close to the guardrails that we have set for each cluster, like query time limit or even the memory limit. So if they are pretty close to the guardrails, we can actually send a warning message back to users so that they can either try to optimize their query or fix it before it starts failing. So this helps in maintaining the reliability of our clusters. So yeah, that's all I had today. Thank you. And let's jump to Q&A. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I can take some questions. If there are any, I don't see anything in the chat. 
Hey, Hitar, thanks for the great session. Um, so a couple of quick questions. Uh, is this um, uh, uh, open source yet? And um, uh, what is the plan around that? That would be helpful if you can share um, some vision around it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Prism is not open source. It has a lot of uh, uh, Uber-specific uh, things tied to it. Uh, um, we do use Presto Go client heavily, which is the open source uh, uh, tool to interact with uh, Presto via Go. So uh, we have added a, a bunch of features and um, uh, asked with there in the open source regarding Presto Go client, which we have added in Prism. So that is one thing that uh, uh, we have open source. But again, like if if there is an interest, we can always try to decouple things and try to make it accessible. Got it. Um, then another question about the, um, you know, the last year I was remembering, uh, we had uh, two or three discussions about Presto Gateways. Uh, there was one that was presented by, uh, I think, the Twitter team, uh, perhaps. Uh, there was, uh, there's also a Presto Gateway that came out of uh, Lyft uh, ecosystem. And um, uh, and I think there were there were a couple others. Have as you built this at Uber and you and the team built this at Uber, um, did you look at some of these other projects out there and and how is this different uh, from some of those uh, that are available? Uh, I think John had a question about is this generally available as well, which you kind of answered where it's uh, not today, but it'll be helpful for for the community to understand how it's different from some of the uh, uh, the gateways that are out there. Yeah, sure. Nice question. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I think we did take a uh, look at the Twitter gateway uh, in the last PrestoCon as well. Uh, so we had been working on the Prism uh, for around uh, two years now. Uh, so uh, probably at that time uh, we did not uh, have uh, uh, like. Uh, inside into the other gateways which were uh, outside um, in other companies. So uh, we were trying to mainly solve the issues that we were seeing within Uber and trying to uh, solve that problem first and see if uh, that helps us. Uh, I, I think uh, when I looked at the presentation from the other teams, it looked pretty similar. The kind of problems that uh, other uh, companies are also facing seemed very similar to what we are trying to solve. So yes, there is. There seems to be a lot of overlap uh, between the functionalities uh, which we are building, which kind of uh, brings us to the point where do we want to have like a generic solution which is open sourceable and which can be shared among multiple companies. So yeah, again, it is pointing us towards that direction and we would be happy uh, to kind of uh, uh, take yeah, this absolutely. forward. Yeah, absolutely. We should uh, have, uh, I mean, uh, Chun Zhu and, uh, uh, Bain, and they're on the uh, probably listening in right now, and so we should uh, take this up and you know have a generic uh, gateway that's available for everyone. Couple of quick questions: uh, JDBC support uh, for Prism uh, is does that exist? Uh, Sali us. Yes, so uh, we we do have a uh, uh, basic JDBC support. Uh, we are currently working on uh, binding our uh, in-house authentication layer into JDBC so that it supports authentication uh, along with the JDBC as well. That's great. And the last question, uh, how will you plan to do customer warnings or uh, query predictions? Yes, so that's a good question, right? So that is the uh, the that that was in the future section plan. So we are what we are trying to do is trying to ad understand the query shape and the query uh, 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 query pattern based on uh, their historical runs as well as uh, some other indications. Um, now, and if we have seen uh, like that kind of query signature or query pattern has been failing or it is close to uh, being considered as a, a, a bad query or it is going to fail. If those indicators uh, 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 indicate any of that, then we can send, like without even running the query on the cluster, we can send the warning or like once we have completed the run, we can see the results and based on the results, uh, we can send the warning saying, yeah, although your query did succeed this time, but this close to the, uh, the limits that we have on our cluster and it is probably a better time uh, time to now start optimizing your queries. So 
yeah that's what uh, that's how we are planning to warn the customers and uh, and make the ecosystem Sounds better good. Uh, Hitar, thanks again for a great session and answering the questions. There might be a few more uh, in the chat. Please go ahead and answer those in the chat um, and uh, feel free to uh, engage with uh, with uh, the rest of the, the folks that are listening in. All right. Um,